Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Spanish political parties. So today's episode was requested by Victor Sivana Granja on YouTube. If you want me to do an episode on another country's political parties, please either comment it down below, send me an email, or put a request in the request form in the description. I currently have requests to do Indian parties, Malaysian parties, Italian parties, the Chinese United Front parties, Croatian parties, Danish parties, maybe a South Africa update, Belgian parties, Colombian parties, Chilean parties, and many more. I want to note that I won't talk about all the parties present in Spain, just because there's a lot. But I will touch up on the important ones. Any party that has a seat in both chambers of Spain's parliament will be talked about in this episode. But just in case you're a fan of the people for Fromentera party, well, sorry champ. Maybe if I make a follow-up 30 years from now, I'll include it. In terms of important things to know about Spain, it's important to understand that Spain is a country of multiple identities. While Spanish-speaking Spaniards make up a majority of the population and political elite, there are several other regional-slash-linguistic groups found in the country who often argue for greater autonomy. While almost every region has some variant of regionalist party or movement, it is particularly felt in Galicia, who speak a language very close to Portuguese, and Catalonia with the Catalans, who speak a language close to Occitanian and apparently is fairly close to Spanish and also commonly found in Valencia and the Balearic Islands. There also are the Basque, who speak a language that has no relation to Spanish or any other language in the world, and are often found in Navarre. While I won't talk about autonomous movements in all of these communities, they will be brought up quite frequently, play an important role in the country, and are partially why there are so many parties present in Spain. I also should note that Spain itself is not a federation, but it does have very large degrees of autonomy for its regions which are called autonomous communities. There are 17 of these, with 15 found on the Iberian Peninsula, and two are island chains found near Spain. These autonomous communities have their own government, and are then broken up into provinces, which have their own government, and often serve as electoral districts for elections. There also are two autonomous cities, which are geographically in Africa, and are claimed by Morocco. For the purposes of this episode, know that I will be talking about each party's presence in these autonomous areas. So the main legislative body in Spain is the Congress of Deputies, the lower house. The Congress is made up of 350 deputies who are elected via proportional representation from 52 different electoral districts found throughout Spain. Depending on the district, the number of deputies and the percentage of votes needed to get elected will vary greatly. For example, Madrid sends the most deputies, with it holding 37 seats, so a party can get as low as 3% of the vote there and still make it into Congress. The autonomous cities of Sayuts and Melilla only send one deputy each, so whichever party gets the most votes there wins the city's single deputy. These deputies will write rules and regulations, set the budget, and elect the prime minister of the country. The upper house is the Senate, which is made up of 265 senators. Senators are elected in two main ways. For 208 senators, they are elected by the voters, with each mainland province sending four senators, while the autonomous cities send two each, and the island communities having a different number of senators for each island, with it ranging from one to three senators per island. The remaining 57 senators are elected via the autonomous communities' governments, with each community sending between one to nine senators, depending on their population. The Senate is a much weaker body compared to Congress, with it not playing a role in electing the Prime Minister, and Congress able to veto most bills that come out of the Senate. However, the Senate can essentially dissolve any regional or local government they disapprove of. While this power isn't often used, when used, it is often very controversial. Spain is also a member of the EU, and sends 59 members to EU Parliament. So let's go to the first party we will talk about today, Partido Socialista Obrero Español, or the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party, or PSOE. PSOE is a social democratic-ish party. It is essentially the main center-left party in the country. It has operated in Spain since the late 1800s, but didn't come to dominate the country until the Second Republic period in the 30s, and then after the fall of the Franco regime in the 1970s. It historically was backed by members of the UGT trade union, although this support has waned. It nowadays has a lot of support in the south of the country, along with certain parts in the north and center of the country, 
and its supporters are stereotyped as being more working class. It currently has 120 deputies, 113 senators, is present in every community's legislature, is a part of the ruling government in 12 of them, and sends 21 members to EU Parliament, where they sit with the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats. It is currently headed by Pedro Sanchez, a deputy from Madrid, and is the current Prime Minister of the country. PSOE favors an economic model that combines economic liberalism with government regulation, especially since the 80s, the party has favored deregulation, privatization of state industries, and third-way economics. It does, however, still believe in a welfare state, wants to raise taxes on the rich and big businesses, and wants to raise the minimum wage. It is pro-EU and backs the United European Armed Force. It socially is left with it backing same-sex marriage, feminism, opposes nuclear power, and wants to give more aid to sub-Saharan African countries in order to limit immigration. While PSOE is often defined as social democratic, it is hard to even justify calling it that since it's so willing to engage in more neoliberal economics. This has created a lot of infighting for the party, with the more socialist wing and the more moderate wing of the party often dueling it out over the direction the party should go. While PSOE is the current ruling party of the country, it seems the many allies PSOE needs in order to remain in charge don't really like them. I'm not going to explain every reason, but some of the main critiques their allies have is that the party is too centrist, it's changing its mind on its policy positions, and that it's invoking the ire of separatist forces in the country. It also has been accused of corruption, of not connecting to its support base, and of just being incompetent at running the country. PSOE is in government with Unidas Podemos, or United We Can, or UP. UP is a left-wing coalition that is primarily dominated by two groups. First is the Podemos Party, a left-wing populist party that was primarily founded by young activists, opposed to austerity measures carried out by the Spanish government. The second group is the United Left Coalition, so a coalition within a coalition. The United Left is a collection of Marxist forces led by the Communist Party of Spain, which has been a strong left-wing alternative to PSOE. Much of the support for UP seems to come from Asturias, the Balearic Islands, the Basque Country, and Navarre. UP has 35 deputies, two senators, is present in all but three of Spain's regional legislatures, makes up the ruling coalition in Navarre, La Roya, Aragon, Valencia, the Balearic Islands, and the Canary Islands, and sends six members to EU Parliament, with most sitting in the left of EU Parliament group, the one sitting with the Green slash European Free Alliance group. The coalition is currently headed by Yolanda Diaz, a deputy from Galicia, the current deputy prime minister of Spain, and the minister of labor and social economy. UP can be divided on its positions, since it's made up of so many left-wing tenets, but generally, it is opposed to capitalism, austerity measures, and neoliberal economics. It favors a move towards a republican Spain, wants a move towards being a federation, wants more taxes on the rich, and wants to end corruption. It is socially progressive, wanting to make it easier to immigrate to Spain, is feminist, and favors greater LGBTQ rights. It also is in favor of the EU, but opposes the neoliberal institutions the EU backs. UP is disliked by right-wingers, and even the more moderate PSOE is seemingly fairly cold towards them. They are seen as just too radical for some, and they feel the party doesn't have a realistic plan for running the country. Its more populist elements have also been met with some criticism, as it has been accused of harassing journalists and appealing to more and more radical elements. Also, just the fact that UP is a coalition of several different strands of left-wing thought, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we see a splintering of the coalition, since the ideological tendencies of the coalition can be quite varied. So that is the ruling government. But it is actually short of a majority in the Congress of Deputies, so they rely on parties that are in a confidence and supply agreement with them. I don't think I've talked about confidence and supply agreements on the show, so I'll just briefly go over what that means. Essentially, the idea is that parties that are in confidence and supply are parties that aren't a part of the government and don't have any government ministers, but aren't really a part of the opposition. They agree to keep the prime minister in power and prevent attempts to remove them from office by the opposition. The level a party in confidence and supply actually supports the government can vary quite a bit. From parties that are essentially pro-government and will work with them on everything, to parties that are essentially opposition parties that stop just short of removing the government from power, for fear that an even worse government will come along. 
So with that out of the way, let's talk about our first confidence and supply party, Escada Republicana de Catalonia, or the Republican Left of Catalonia, or ERC. The ERC is a Catalan-based party that fights for the independence of Catalonia and sits on the left politically. It is also present, although to a much lesser extent, in Valencia, the Balearic Islands, and even in some parts of France. The party, of course, is supported by Catalan speakers, and seems to find the most support outside of urban Barcelona. It currently has 12 deputies, 13 senators, is a part of the ruling coalition in Catalonia, and sends two members to EU Parliament, who sit in the green european Free Alliance group. It is currently headed by Oriol Juqueres, a former member of EU Parliament and former vice president of Catalonia. The ERC wants Catalan independence. It argues that Catalans in not just Catalonia, but also outside of the autonomous community, should join and form an independent republic present in the EU. It also backs progressive social policies, describing itself as feminist and environmentalist, and backs a strong welfare state. Considering the ERC is a party that bases itself off of fighting for an independent Catalonia, it is not surprising that Spanish Unionists dislike them. Unionists claim that Catalan separatism is exclusionary, and only for Catalan speakers, who wish to dominate the speakers of Spanish and other languages. Unionists also claim the state would fail to join the EU, its economy could suffer, and it would likely be a long and complicated process to finally become independent. Many of the party leaders were, or are imprisoned, after the failed 2017 independence referendum that resulted in a massive crackdown in the region by the central Spanish government. Juqueras was actually in jail until recently in June, so there is a question of how long the party will last if the central government decides to put more pressure on them. Next we go to the Basque Nationalist Party, or in Basque, Elsco el Dertigel Scalea, or EAJ, or in Spanish, Partito Nacionalista Vasco, or PNV. For simplicity, I'll just use EAJ. EAJ is a Basque Nationalist Party, fighting for a Basque government more independent from Spain. Although the party line seems to not support 100% independence from Spain, it ideologically sits in the center of the political spectrum. It operates mostly in the Basque Country and Navarre, but also has a small branch operating in the Basque-speaking areas of France. It is backed mostly by Basque speakers, mainly in the north in the Biscay province. It currently has six deputies, ten senators, is a part of the ruling coalition in both the Basque Country and Navarre, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the Renew Europe group. It is currently headed by Antoni Otozar, a journalist. EAJ supports traditional Basque structures. It promotes the Basque language, supports the right of self-determination for the Basque people, and wants the Basque regional government to continue to dominate financial affairs in its territory. It also backs a welfare state, opposes violence, and is seemingly pro-EU. EAJ, like ERC, is disliked by Spanish Unionists, although since it doesn't outright call for independence, it isn't hated as much. Unionists will use much of the same arguments against Basque separatism as they do against Catalan separatism, that it is exclusionary, will hurt the economy, and will be a long and complicated legal process. However, since EAJ is a more moderate nationalist party, it also is disliked by more radical Basque nationalists, who see it as selling out to the Spanish government, and of not doing enough to actually protect Basque language and culture. Speaking of more radical Basque nationalists, let's go to Escal Jaria Bildu, or Basque Country Gather, or Eh Bildu. Eh Bildu is a coalition of Basque nationalist parties, and represents a philosophy known as the Albetzele Left. This combines radical self-determination for the Basque people and left-wing politics, ranging from more moderate progressive to radical Marxist and anti-capitalist positions. It is present in the Basque community and Navarre, with a stronghold in the province of Gipuzkoa. It has five deputies, two senators, is present in both the Basque and Navarre legislatures, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the left of EU Parliament group. It is currently headed by Arnaldo Tegui, a former legislator in the Basque Parliament. Eh Bildu wants an independent Basque state and supports the right of self-determination for the Basque people to decide their fate. It supports more direct democracy and referendum, and wants to do more to promote the Basque language and multiculturalism in the region. It also opposes neoliberal labor reform, supports greater LGBTQ rights, supports greater rights for migrants entering Spain, and backs progressive taxes. So, again, another party unionists will not like. However, F. Bildu's radical brand of nationalism has some more controversial origins. 
The party and some of its high-ranking members, including Otegi, are believed to be affiliated with the ETA terrorist group. This was a terrorist group that operated from the 60s until their early 2010s, committing assassinations, bombings, kidnappings, and arson to try to liberate the Basque country from Spain using violent means. A little under 1,000 people were killed by the ETA using various means, with some of its targets being Spanish military or paramilitary groups, others being political figures and civil servants, and others just being civilians. The ETA no longer operates, but if Bildu is considered the political home of its supporters and former members, which has earned it the hatred of a lot of those on the political right in Spain, and even among the victims of the violence. We go to another coalition with Mas País, or more country. Mas País is a collection of several different left-wing forces in the country, although unlike UP, they aren't as Marxist. It is primarily led by two different groups. First is the Mas Madrid Party, which is a progressive party that is based in the capital of Madrid and was the founder of the group. The other leading group is Compromis, a left-wing nationalist coalition founded in Valencia. Mas País is relatively new, and it seems in the latest election it underperformed by quite a bit. With it being planned as a kind of national party that could rival PSOE and UP, but instead it is far more on the periphery. It is new, so we'll just have to see where the party goes and if they can grow at all. It currently has three deputies, two senators, and its various coalition members are present in the regional parliaments of Madrid and Andalusia, and is a part of the ruling coalition in Aragon and Valencia. It is currently headed by Inigo Idejon, a deputy from Madrid and former regional legislature. Mas País is progressive, wanting to lower the voting age to 16, wants to lower carbon emissions in Spain on the local level, favors the private sector in leading ecological change, and wants to build more green jobs in the country. It also is in favor of a four-day work week, wants to invest more in trains, wants to raise the minimum wage, supports universal basic income for those with children, wants more women to be visible in public broadcast, and supports greater LGBTQ rights. Next we go to Terrell Existe, or Terrell Exist, or TE. TE is a small party based in the province of Terrell in southern Aragon. Terrell itself is seemingly a kind of backwater province that nobody really talks about, is underdeveloped, and apparently there's a joke in Spain that Terrell doesn't exist, similar to the joke there is about Wyoming, Finland, or Arce. TE seeks to reverse this trend by trying to build up Terrell and is part of a wider movement called Emptied Spain that seeks to reverse population decline in rural areas. It currently has one deputy and two senators. It is headed by Tomas Guidarte, the party's sole deputy. TE is mainly focused on strengthening the infrastructure of Teruel. It wants to expand and build up the infrastructure to and from Teruel, connecting the province to the capital Madrid. It wants more EU funds to come into the province. It wants greater income for those living in these depopulated areas. Wants better paying jobs in the region and favors greater autonomy for rural areas. The last supply and confidence party we will talk about is the Partito Regionalista de Cantabria, or the Regionalist Party of Cantabria, or PRC. The PRC is a party found in the Cantabria region in the north, and promotes regionalist politics, founded to oppose attempts to merge Cantabria into Castile, and leans slightly left. It has been a part of the ruling coalition in the region almost continuously since the mid-90s, it currently has one deputy, one senator, and is the ruling party in the region. It is headed by Miguel Angariva, the current president of the Cantabria region, and a member of the regional legislature. The PRC believes in an autonomous Cantabria, it promotes a Cantabrian identity and heritage, wants more power for the Cantabrian government, and backs other regionalist parties and coalitions in Spain. It is pro-EU, but favors a decentralized version of the Union. It also backs a welfare state and opposes corruption. So those are all the pro-government, or at least not anti-government parties. So let's start talking about the opposition now. The largest is the Partido Popular, or the People's Party, or PP. Don't laugh, this is a very mature podcast. PP is the main right-wing force in the country and is conservative. It is the traditional enemy of PSOE and has run the country several times since it was founded in 89. The party is split between a more moderate liberal conservative center right wing, and a new growing wing that pushes the party towards being more devoutly traditionalist, especially on social matters. It is commonly found in the northwest of the country and in some parts of the south and center, and its supporters are stereotyped as being well off. 
it currently has 88 deputies, 97 senators, is present in every region of Spain except Navarre, and is part of the ruling coalition in Andalusia, Castile and Leon, Ceut, Madrid, Galicia, and Murcia, and sends 21 members to EU Parliament who sit in the European People's Party group. It is headed by Pablo Casado, a deputy from Madrid, and is the current leader of the opposition. PP is economically quite liberal. It wants lower taxes, especially on businesses and families, generally favors privatization, supports neoliberal labor reform, and its immigration policy is based on ensuring migrants who immigrate will work and keep their money in Spain. It is pro-EU, especially on economic matters, and historically is fairly pro-NATO. It is socially conservative, although it has moderated at times. For example, it currently backs same-sex unions and wants to reduce the gender wage gap. However, it still is pro-life, often defends Spain's role in the history of the world, backs tough on crime laws, is very much pro-monarch, defending their role in the country, and is very opposed to regional separatism in Spain, opposing more autonomy for regional governments generally. PP, while it is the current top dog in right-wing politics, has also experienced some major reversals over the past several years. Several corruption scandals and its policies of cutting social programs while in power has led to the party being seen in a more negative light in the general public. Its strong hostility towards regionalist parties has led to it massively declining in regions like Catalonia, where the party is seen as wanting to crush any freedom these regions have. Its moderating of social views has also created problems, as more right-wing members have been flocking to the more right-wing Vox party, the party then had to make some alliances with Vox to get into power in several regions, which led to more centrist voters distancing themselves from the party. So the party is stuck between either getting closer with Vox and losing more centrist voters, or sticking to its center-right course and losing more right-wing voters. Also, before we go to the next party, I do want to mention that both PP and PSOE actually have theme songs. You can find them on YouTube, and I'm not joking, they literally sound like music they'd have in like an old Pokemon game, or Wii Sports, or some indie game. Honestly, PP's anthem is a little better, but both are still pretty good. The next party is Vox, or Latin for voice. Vox, as stated before, is further right from PP, with it appealing to right-wing populist, Spanish nationalist, and national conservatives, all people opposed to the current state of Spanish politics and it even brags on its website that the party supporters are, quote, people who don't read the newspaper, making a commentary on mass media. It was founded as a break-off of PP, and while initially it received little support, it saw a massive increase in its vote share in the two 2019 elections. Its supporters tend to be middle class, are often found in urban areas in the south of Spain, and in Murcia and Ceut. It currently has 52 deputies, three senators, is present in all but six of Spain's regional legislatures, supports the ruling government in Murcia and Madrid, and sends four members to EU Parliament, who sit in the European Conservative and Reformist Group. It is currently headed by Santiago Abascal, a former regional legislator from the Basque Country and current deputy from Madrid. Vox is very vocal on social and internal issues. It is pro-life, opposes greater LGBTQ rights, wants to deport illegal immigrants, and dramatically halt immigration from African and Arab countries, and wants to ban pro-independence parties. It, while not calling directly for Spain to leave the EU, is hostile towards it, opposing greater integration, and supports the current governments in Poland and Hungary for fighting the EU's influence. Economically, it likes free market economics, favors privatization, wants less taxes, especially on businesses, supporting a flat 21% tax, wants less government spending, and opposes expanding the welfare state. It also wants more power to go towards the central government, is pro-Israeli, wants to take over Gibraltar, opposes environmentalist laws and pressure groups, and wants more power for parents and education. While Vox's quick rise has earned it a lot of support, it has earned it just as many detractors. The party has been accused of racism, homophobia, climate change denialism, sexism, and of being made up of fascist, or apologists for the Franco dictatorship. The party has denied all of this, claiming it is a smear campaign by big media, although they might use more colorful language like globalist or cultural Marxist. PP and other Sunray parties are, as mentioned, in an awkward position where they know working with Vox in any way will result in a lot of bad press and could potentially drive more moderate voters away. 
so they instead try to use Vox as a partner of Last Resort. This discourages Vox from getting into power, and makes it difficult for them to govern. Also, the party has been accused of being funded by Russia, and strangely, the People's Mujahideen of Iran, which is an Iranian dissident group that is part paramilitary slash terrorist organization, part hybrid of Islamic and left-wing thought, and part cult. So the last national party we will go over is Ciudadanos, Partito de la Ciudadanía, or Citizens, Party of the Citizenry, or CS. Citizens is a liberal party that was founded as a centrist party opposed to Catalan independence, but has now drifted towards being more firmly on the right and as an ally of PP first and foremost. It is largely backed by seemingly urban voters, particularly those found in the city of Barcelona and Madrid, and in Andalusia and Valencia. It currently has nine deputies, nine senators, is present in all but three regional legislatures, is a part of the ruling coalition in Castile and Leon and Andalusia, and sends seven members to EU Parliament, who sit in the Renew Europe group. It is currently headed by Ian Zarimadas, a deputy from Catalonia, and former member of the Catalonian Parliament. Citizens is quasi-libertarian, supporting less government in both social issues and economics, it backs less government regulation, wants lower income taxes for rural areas and businesses, and wants to make it easier to start up a business. It is in favor of greater LGBTQ rights, is pro-choice, and backs liberal feminism. It is strongly opposed to separatism in Spain, and favors the imprisonment of separatist politicians who took part in the 2017 independence referendum in Catalonia. It also favors an eventually federal EU, wants to set a national 3% electoral threshold, wants to do more to reduce suicide in the country, and is strongly anti-corruption. Citizens was at the beginning of 2019, looks set to dominate the Spanish political scene and remain as a powerful centrist bloc. However, after the April 2019 election failed to create a government, the party was heavily punished in the polls in the November 2019 election, with most voters choosing to vote for either PP or PSOE to ensure a government was formed. Nowadays, it seems to act as just an ally for PP, and I wouldn't be surprised if it eventually just merges or becomes a surrogate party for PP. Since citizen voters are now mostly center-right, it makes perhaps more sense to just vote for PP if you want a center-right government. Also, the party has been accused of being a party supported by big businesses, since it wants to lower taxes and is generally neoliberal. We go back to regionalist parties with the Junts per Catalunya, or Together for Catalonia, Junts is a Catalan separatist coalition that combines a variety of political positions, but are generally to the right of the ERC, and are liberal-ish. It was founded by Charles Pugdemont, a leader in the Catalan independence movement, the leader of the coalition, and currently a wanted criminal by the Spanish government for his involvement in the Catalan independence referendum. It seemingly gets most support in the north of Catalonia. It currently has four deputies, five senators, is a part of the ruling coalition in Catalonia, and sends three members to EU Parliament. Junts favors an independent Republic of Catalonia, backs other separatist forces in Europe, and favors the Catalan language. It is pro-EU, but also believes that the Union needs to do more to protect the rights of minorities and political dissidents. It favors individual freedom, backing a market economy, wants to lower taxes, backs a direct democracy, and is strongly anti-corruption. Next we go to the Unión de Pueblo Navarro, or the Navarre People's Union, or UPN. UPN is a center-right conservative political party based in Navarre. It has historically been fairly close with PP, and essentially serves as the Navarre branch of the party. It has served as the main unionist party in Navarre, opposing Basque nationalism, and instead promoting unionist and regionalist politics. Its backers are likely mostly Spanish speakers. It currently has two deputies, one senator, and is the main opposition party in Navarre. It is headed by José Javier Esparza Abrea, a member of the Navarre Parliament and former mayor of AOS. UPN's identity tends to revolve around opposing Basque nationalism. It opposes an independent Basque state, opposes the merging of Navarre with the Basque government, instead fighting for a distinct Navarrese identity, supports greater self-government for the Navarre region, and wants to persecute former ETA members. It also is pro-life, opposes discrimination, and generally supports liberal economics. The last party we will talk about is the Coalition Canaria, or the Canarian Coalition, or CC. 
CC is a party based in the Canary Islands and represents center-right conservatives and liberals on the islands. It promotes a Canarian identity, fighting for greater self-autonomy for the islands. It historically was dominant in the region, with it controlling the islands from 1993 until 2018. It seems to have the most support on El Hello and La Palma. It currently has one deputy, one senator, and is the largest opposition party in the Canary Islands. It is currently headed by Fernando Clivo Batie, the former president of the islands, and the party's only senator. CC backs greater autonomy for the islands. It supports greater investment in the Canarian livestock industry, wants to do more to acknowledge the importance of the mixed identity of the Canary Islands as a place between Europe and Africa, wants to use Canarian identity to forge ties in America and Africa, and believes in self-determination for the Canary Islands, although I don't think they advocate for independence. They also favor diversifying the Canarian economy away from tourism, wants to encourage sport, and favors sustainable development. So those are the parties of Spain. To summarize, there are two main parties of Spain, PSOE on the left and PP on the right. Several other national parties are also present, like UP and Mas País on the left, and Citizens and Vox on the right. And then finally, there are several separatist and regionalist parties that play their own role in Spanish politics. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Sorry if I was kind of vague on some of the smaller regionalist parties, information seems to be kind of limited on them. Also, my bad if my Spanish is really bad. I don't speak Spanish, so, yeah. Also, sorry if I sound a little tired during this episode. I had previously recorded all of it, and then I went to go edit it, and then Audacity just would not let me open the file, so I had to re-record all of it. So, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little sick of thinking about Spanish politics. I will be incredibly happy once this episode is out, which hopefully it will be in just like a day or so. So after this, I'm doing the history of Brazil, and then Indian parties, and Malaysian parties, and then go on from there. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. If you want, you can send me an email at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.